have identified some very, very interesting anomalous um, type of aircraft. The traffic is quite luminous and is exhibiting some anomalistic motion of it. Uh, moved very rapidly at any speed or whether any direction it wanted to go. Why it could change and go to the right or the left or go crossways uh, without hesitating a bit. What do you think it was? Well, if they call it a flying saucer, that's what it is. EWA-517, do you want to report a UFO? Over. Negative. We don't want to report. Look, it wasn't my worst Wednesday night. Good evening, everybody. This is Smiles Lewis, and you are tuned into another live edition of Anomaly Now, straight out of Austin, Texas. This is the weekly news roundup show of the 501c3 Scientific Anomaly Institute, aka the Anomaly Archives. Welcome and thank you for tuning in, whether it is night, day, morning, evening. Maybe you're floating out in space and receiving this as a transmission and you have no sense of, of uh, cyclical day or night. So, hey, aliens, hail, welcome. <laughs> Are you our new overlords? Uh, we may be finding out very, very soon, folks. Uh, boy, what a weird uh, several days it's been. Uh, it's actually been several weeks since we've done the show. Um, sorry for all those who've, uh, who've missed it. I certainly have missed doing it, uh, but... A couple of weeks back, um, we did a show with Mark, but uh, unfortunately, we, we don't have a, a recording of that available. But uh, you can go to the website and find uh, the links to all the past shows that we've done. Uh, and uh, the archive of this one will be there along with all the other past shows. And that's if you want to get it in the uh, vlog, video, uh, web, pod, vodcast, whatever you want to call it, version. Um but yeah, it's been it's been a very uh, strange several um, days, so and weeks. Uh, so we we uh, missed a week after that for uh, stuff related to the nonprofit. We're still looking for a physical location. There are uh, city funds that City of Austin voters voted to uh, spend to try to save Austin's culture and it's nonprofits and it's for profits and it's arts and it's music and it's whatever else that makes it weird. We're hoping that that'll count for something, but uh, we had, we were at the opening uh, or the ground breaking sort of the ribbon cutting. I don't know what you call it, but uh, an, an event uh, where we were looking at one of the spaces that's being funded. And uh, it's so good to see that that kind of thing is happening and, and hopefully it'll slow the, uh, the degradation of Austin's weirdness. Um, and then this past week, uh, we were right about to do the show, and yay, technology, technical issues uh, vexed us. But uh, we are back, and uh, so, so yeah, the last several days, what do you think people have been talking about? But, um, oh, it's Bigfoot, right? Or no, no, not Bigfoot, uh, Loch Ness Monster. That's what people have been talking about? Um, ghosts, ghosts. It's ghosts that people have been talking about. There's been some whistleblower about uh, ghost truth. Um, no. Oh, uh, what is it? I forget. Well, uh, you can go over to our Flipboard. Uh, that's uh, flipboard.com slash at symbol anomaly archives, one word slash anomaly dash archives and some other jib jibber jabber. And you'll get there eventually. Or you can go to the anomalyarchives.org website and link over and find that. But that's where we post all of our links, great news articles. Uh, this is where I dump everything. I'm like, I got to read this. I don't have time now. And a lot of times I don't end up having enough time, but, oh, here we go. Ex-intelligence official says government hiding alien technology from Congress. What? The myths are true? Uh, yeah. So this has been happening. Uh, and, of course, it has lit up the uh, 
UFO Twitter sphere, etc. The, uh, the 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 ufology scene is all a Twitter, all uh, uh, talking about. Uh, is it Dave Grawl? Is that his name? No, no, Dave Grush. That's right, Dave Grush. Uh, we have started a page over at the Anomaly Archives uh, for Dave Grush, but uh, we'll get to that eventually, anyway. But yeah, um, what seems strange to me is. Um, over the last, um, uh, yeah, several months, there's just been this kind of interesting progression to my mind uh, of, of a, a theme that's been kind of playing out. And maybe it's all just a synchronicity coincidence. Um, but I just, I recall uh, back, uh, let's see. Um, oh, well, I've already jumped past ahead of this, but I was going to say, oh, by the way, um, there is the... Uh, Anomaly Archives has made a playlist based off of the Rice Humanities uh, Archives of the Impossible uh, Second Conference playlist. Um, I've put them in the right order. There's only one missing that they haven't posted yet, but yeah, you can go uh, find the link to this. And uh, you can watch all those great lectures that I was talking about some time back uh, that happened at Rice University, the Archives of the Impossible, Jeff Kripal, and all these wonderful speakers there. Um, so yeah, anyway, back to... Uh, uh, this theme I've been uh, detecting. So yeah, do you remember like back in um, uh, this? See, this would have been March, uh, early March of this year. Pentagon UFO chief says alien mothership in our solar system possible. And this is over at MilitaryTimes.com, a column called the Observation Post. And this is talking about uh, Avi Loeb and Sean Kirkpatrick. Uh, Sean Kirkpatrick of I believe the uh, Aero Office their paper on the idea that, well, you know, maybe there's something like a von Neumann mothership out there that the uh, von Neumann probe mothership that, that's uh, where all these UFO UAP are coming from. And of course the, the headlines really overstate, you know, their idea. It was more of a possible uh, idea. And uh, lo and behold, um, a little while later, um, uh, Victor brought to my attention this uh, 4chan, uh, uh, alleged 4chan whistleblower, another anonymous person on a 4chan. Oh no, where will this lead? But uh, very interesting ideas expressed in it, and it kind of mimics this idea of a mothership. In, but instead of it being out there somewhere in the solar system, it's right here on Earth. Oh, it's in the Bermuda Triangle. Um, it's it's uh, this mothership that's manufacturing, built to spec, built to to uh, uh, mission type uh ufos and so that's why there's so many different varieties that's why or maybe that's why that they seem to be um um uh, just all over the place all the time um anyway some very interesting ideas of course i don't put any or much stock in anonymous people online uh, but it, it seemed to be setting this this interesting idea again of um, the idea of a mothership that's that's manufacturing or and, dis and dispersing these uh, these objects that we've been fascinated with for millennia, and then within uh, uh, I guess it was a, the, a month after that there was this Daily Mail article exclusive six whistleblowers who claim they worked in the military UFO program retrieving and analyzing crash material. So this this momentum building uh, with these different articles I don't. I don't remember if this one mentions any of the, the, the mothership ideas, but again, this idea that, that the government uh, has uh, been recovering crashed UFOs and reverse engineering them. Of course, this, this is the core story. This is the, the, the ultimate core myth of the modern UFO myth. As I often joke, uh, crash soccer, saucers, pickled aliens, and government cover-ups. Uh, this idea that has long been around since at least the 70s, maybe maybe only as far back as the 80s, but but well, it actually goes back as far as 1947 with the the, the claim of the crash saucer being retrieved at Roswell, um, and the this the endless series of stories and research that have gone on uh, towards trying to verify this this idea and this idea that that the military industrial complex has secreted away all this technology that could save humanity or, or destroy our enemies. And yet is it being used? There doesn't seem to be that much evidence for it, but UFO sightings continue flitting about our skies, waving their nose 
uh, in front of us. And, um, and then, and then this guy, Mr. Garrett double R Nolan, uh, goes to the New York salt conference, I connections conference and makes a lot of wild claims. The national defense appropriation act. Not this last year, signed by, by Biden in uh, December. 30 pages of that is the establishment of an unidentified aerial phenomenon office, the establishment of looking into the harm that's happened to any of a number of the individuals, going back to 1945 and looking at the disinformation and misinformation that has been uh, basically articulated over the decades. 12 U.S. senators have signed on to a document that basically says we want the information. The establishment of an office, Arrow, in the Department of Defense, has 25 people working in it right now. And what's their, what's their goal? Collecting the information across all of the, uh, all of the U.S. Department of Intelligence, sorry, Department of Defense, intelligence offices, and collation of that into a uniform format for the very first time and provision of that then to Congress, the creation of a whistleblowers program specifically that allows people from, the, from within, who I'm gonna say this, who've been working on the reverse engineering programs, reverse engineering of objects, so that they can come in and break their oaths, but it's specifically just to talk to Congress and give that information in classified settings. And that the most recent one that happened was just last weekend, and it created quite a hornet's nest in Washington. So everybody's been speculating about that. And of course, then he goes on to say more. There's a lot of stuff he talks about in this. Um, My experience with people who, frankly, I know have worked or are working on the reverse engineering programs. Rev okay, so let's let's take one step back. Reverse. <laughs> yes, let's let's take well, let's take a, a couple steps back. But uh, very interesting stuff. He goes on to talk about the fact that he's working with Avi Loeb on the Copernicus project, which is designed to do what he also talks about in this same lecture, which is kind of gets to this idea of a mothership that creates little, you know, DIY or uh, mission specific UAP UFOs. Um, and he, he, he doesn't, it, he talks about von Neumann probes, this idea of self self replicating, uh, a spacecraft that could that could be used to uh, uh, seed us throughout the, the solar system, the galaxy, and whatnot. And lo and behold, he's working uh, for a corporation called the Copernicus Space Corporation. Um, I thought I had brought that up, but maybe I didn't bring it up. Where? No, oh, anyway. Um, and this, you know, the, so it's just there's a very incestuous series of of, of things going on here. Um, and of course this goes now, then you've got, you, we go back to, uh, having people like Chris Mellon write this for Politico. If the government has UFO crash materials, it's time to reveal them. The benefits to humanity, humanity outweigh the fear of discovering we're not alone in the universe. And, uh, yes, Christopher Mellon, uh, private equity investor, research affiliate with Harvard university's Galileo project, senior advisor to Americans, um, for safe aerospace. He's a former minority staff director of the Senate Intelligence Committee and former deputy assistant director, assistant secretary of defense for intelligence. And um, yes, he's been right there with uh, Lou Elizondo, uh, previously Tom DeLong, and he's been part of this wave that's been bringing all out this seeming uh, disclosure. Everybody wants to believe that this is, this is the disclosure that we, everybody's been wanting for so long. Um, and so again, the thing, the, the, the stepping stones are being laid, the, the, the narrative, uh, the, the breadcrumbs for this story are being uh, thrown out there, spoon fed, laid along the path for us, the public to, uh, to, to get into. And um, it's been a very interesting uh, ride. I, so I'm not, I guess it was, um it was this uh i was made aware of this pending uh whistleblower story about dave grush and i started watching uh this uh colehart and bryce zabel 
uh, interview where they're talking about the the imminent release of this story and how uh, Colart has been uh, working with Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal to interview Dave Grosh, Grush and uh, bring out these 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 uh, bits of information and um so as I say over at um, Anomaly Archives, we've got a new page. There's not that much information there, mostly just quotes from this this uh, big article that's been released at thedebrief.org uh, that we'll get to in a second. But a lot of the quotes there, and I love this is the actually the ending quote from the article uh, with Dave. Dave saying, I hope this revelation serves as an ontological shock sociologically and provides a generationally uniting issue for nations of the world to reassess their priorities. Well, that's a, that's a tall order there, fella. Good luck, uh, and I, I, you know, um, I as as any listener to me or uh, my past broadcast knows, I am very suspicious in general, and especially of this new wave of UAP, uh, quote unquote, disclosure. But um, it's very. This is a fascinating story. Watching this unfold, um, the dude has uh, quite the background. He appears to be have been vetted as as being everything he claims, and has apparently made uh, this testimony for Congress, and this has been going on for the last couple of years. Um, he apparently was not a UFO enthusiast, allegedly, before being tasked to work in the government on these UAP projects. Um, and now he's claiming that he knows people in the reverse engineering crash retrieval programs, and that they ha have told him uh, th that it's real, that the core story is real. And um, this is a disinfo campaign. It's very, it's very elaborate, and uh, you know, time will tell. Maybe I don't know if we ever really know for sure. But uh, this newish news agency, News Nation, um, uh, has gotten this exclusive for the the initial video interview. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned previously. Um, uh, this, this news nation, um, video is actually interviewed done by, uh, Ross Coulthard and, um, uh, wherein this, uh, Dave Gross, Grush <laughs> goes into detail about, uh, what he knows, uh, without ever breaking his secrets. And there's, a, there's some interesting parts to that, that it, it appears that he's been vetted, by uh, Dopser, which um, is the, the organization. If you've been in the intelligence community, you have to put your information through them before uh, to make sure that you're not going to reveal any secrets, that sort of thing. Um, that's the premise. But and it, as always, I'm just like skeptical. Like, it can't is there are there ways of of uh, thwarting that sort of thing, um, or sidestepping it, or providing cover uh, for psychological warfare campaigns? But uh, so newsnation.com, newsnationnow.com, excuse me, is where uh, this main uh, other video article is at um, Military Whistleblower Claims U.S. has UFO Retrieval Program. And um, I was, uh, the complete aside, I was pleasantly surprised to, to learn this is where Elizabeth Vargas ended up. I remember her from ABC News many years ago uh, or several years ago. And uh, so it was interesting seeing her being the the anchor person reporting on this at least the lead in and so forth and news nation is uh, do, making a lot of hay out of this getting a lot of traction with various uh, news clips uh, that you can find on youtube and that we'll link to in the show notes um interesting stuff and meanwhile um there's some interesting so like why is this all happening right now um and there, there's some interesting little tidbits here, and, and this may be nothing, but it, it really seems like uh, there's a media campaign um, that's been mounted and that was gearing up to, to, to launch. And the impression I'm getting is that this is prematurely launched uh, for a variety of reasons. So let's see if I can play this quick clip here. I don't think we can reveal all the reasons. I mean, it, it has to do with a lot of placement of various media that's going to be coming after and so on. But the main reason was because there were leaks that were developing. Even his Dave's name came out. One of the other people in our character in our I think it was actually an interview you did with Danny Sheehan. Actually, and there were other I mean, there were just 
sites that were building and building and building. And our, our source, Dave Grush, was starting to get nervous. He was starting to get strange phone calls. There were, you know, people were making weird comments about FBI raids. And it was just like the tension was just building for him. You know, he'd been waiting for so long that um, it just got to a point where we were, the, the leaking process was what we were worried about, that somebody might go out and try to do a story about him that presented him in a negative light, for instance, or lie about him in the media. I mean, people do terrible, all kinds of horrible things. So we just felt this urgency at, the, at a certain point. We just had to get it out. And and that's what he wanted as well. And you may want to add to that, Ralph. I don't well, know, I but that's say that. So and, and there's an interesting little tidbit there about she's alluding to this interviewer's uh, previous interview with Daniel Sheehan, which came out. Uh, a few weeks before, and sure enough, I haven't finished watching this whole thing, but there is this point where um, he says, "So, so I'm in I'm in dialogue with a lot of the the people that were formerly inside the uh, the U.S. government uh, that were working on this particular uh, set of programs with Lou Elizondo and Chris Mellon and uh, and Dave Garouche and uh, Carl Nell. There's a whole bunch of different people uh, that have so." Yeah, what is I just find that interesting. It just and there was some other comment uh, in one of these interviews, and I'm getting so confused because I've been watching so many of these now. Um, oh, and I don't have it queued up, but of course everybody's talking about this, uh, and I, I, as always, uh, am interested in people who have uh, different takes and different uh, approaches to studying this subject than I do. Um, and for instance. Um, uh, uh, John Greenwald of the Black Vault, of course, he has been uh, when 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 I was get, just getting really started, he too was a very young, just getting started person in the field, and he's been doing uh, his excellent FOIA research all these years. And as much as people uh, who are just rah 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 cheerleading for uh, this new wave of disclosure and whatnot uh, get frustrated at his skepticism and, and uh, criticality and uh, discerning eye when it comes to how all these things are being represented. Um, he, he, in analyzing the situation, I, I actually was going to have show the clips, but <clears throat> he points out that he, he, he finds the fact that, that um, Grosh uh, has passed successfully through the Dopser process makes him feel like this, this is, that's a red flag. And that, 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 he sh he wouldn't be able to to do that 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 if if any of what he's saying is true it should have tripped some alarm bells there and um uh, he wouldn't have gotten permission though i i i have to imagine there would have been a way to just like just i don't know if it's like the mpaa and you just you sh show them another edit of the film and you're like okay well we've cut this this and this and this you know can we now have a pg13 rating and not an r rating uh, or whatever, I don't know. Um, but he also goes on to uh, reiterate what he's been saying for quite some time, which is despite everybody's insistence that, oh, a disclosure is happening and the government's opening up, the opposite is happening. That from what he is seeing and from his you know, decades of doing these FOIA reports and, and digging in and getting information on UFOs and, and UAP and whatnot, that it the, the government is clamping down and is, is being even harsher in terms of trying to get this information out. And, uh, and I, 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 the, he's the one doing that hard work. So I, I trust his judgment and I suspect he, he's, he's bound to be correct in that. Uh, so even as everybody is cheerleading this apparent uh, revelation of these, this program, one has to wonder. And um, you know, in fact, uh, as I've said, I, I suspect that there's something else going on here. And um, when I, not too long ago, earlier this year, was reporting on uh, Lou, the other Lou, uh, who had the uh, unidentified celebrity review show, um, and he went off about... Uh, giving up on the UFO community and, and basically was accusing Lou Elizondo and others of all kinds of nefarious stuff, not least of which was sock puppet um, operating fake, fake, you know, uh, fake social media accounts and so forth to do dirty work. Um, and he's, you know, done a 180 on uh, 
his belief in the likelihood of any of this being actual disclosure. But he turned me on to this other uh, researcher, UFO witness, former military guy, Jeremy McAllen, who was at one time close to uh, Lou Elizondo and did a series of exposés on his experience with Lou Elizondo and, and the, the, what he f- saw as red flags. He's most recently in the last few days done this asymmetric warfare use of photo whistleblowers and UAP uh, illusion article. I, it's nothing. It, it doesn't really actually give any good uh, explanation for uh, vetting this as one, but he's clearly suspicious. And um, I, I, I would say, as always, you know, don't believe the hype, but don't disbelieve, you know, wholeheartedly. I, th- I think that there there may be a there there. We have yet to know for sure. Um, and I'm I'm certainly I would love for this to be proven true. Um, I, I suspect that it, it could still be uh, spun in such a way that, I, as I think it already is being done, is just another excuse for uh, militarizing. A subject that should be, you know, the public domain, and uh, it, when it's when it's constantly viewed as a threat, uh, and, and that's obviously going to be used to justify getting more military spending, and um, and potentially, as as John Greenwald and others are saying, uh, clamping down on the secrecy, making it harder to do what used to be challenging enough as it was to get information out of out of the government about these subjects. Um, but boy, uh, this. This uh, subject, uh, this, this story is spreading. Um, there's still, uh, as far as I can see, not been any new coverage uh, or new exploration of this from the mainstream media. However, the mainstream media, like The Guardian, Newsweek, uh, The Atlantic, and others, are actually reporting on News Nation's interview and uh, Ralph uh, and Leslie's uh, debrief article. And um, it's 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 fascinating, I, at least to me. And I, I hope I hope you uh, this gives you a little bit uh, to go on for our weekly news roundup. Um, there's obviously so much more. Uh, you can of course go to anomalyarchives.org, and you can go to our Flipboard. And like I said, there's just a ton of other news there. A lot of it right now is just me collecting links to uh, stories related to this this current flap of uh, whistleblowing about alleged. Uh, crash retrievals of UFO and reverse engineering of UFO technology and how uh, uh, Dave uh, Grush is alleging that the uh, these different secret programs have been lying to Congress and that the evidence is there and he's so allegedly presented, uh, presented uh, whatever he can and we'll see if it ever sees the light of day and where this all leads. I am very curious to see that. Meanwhile, just real briefly, uh, hey, wow, San Francisco uh, Gate newspaper has an, uh, an article on Operation Midnight Climax, the CIA mixed LSD and sex at this uh, San Francisco brothel. That's not news. Um, that's like ancient freaking history. And while I'm all for uh, bringing uh, such uh, um, predation on the public at the hands of uh, uh, by the, at the by, by these uh, uh, intelligence agencies in, in these MK Ultra mind control type settings, um, I, is there a new twist? I haven't had the chance to read it. Maybe I'm missing some new bit of information, but uh, it just sounds like a nostalgic. Um, uh, looking back. So uh, meanwhile, our good friend Mike Cleland has a new book out that's actually a fiction book about UFOs and his favorite subject. Uh, so we can find links to that. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, links to all the Archives of the Impossible 2 Electric Bulu Conference, um, as well as uh, Dr. Stephen Finlay uh, giving lectures, lots and lots of other stuff. And even there is Ah, uh, here, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Victor, for the mysterious species buried their dead and carved symbols 100,000 years before humans. Wow. Um, <laughs> uh, just all kinds of great news links over there at our Flipboard. So I guess that's going to do it for tonight. Thank you for joining us, and we'll be back next week again and again and again. Thank you all. Good night.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>